Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. So thank you for doing this with me. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, you didn't have so much of a choice actually <laughs> in the matter, but yeah. So first let's start out with, this is my dear friend Stacy. And I would love it if you would start out the podcast by talking a little bit about your background. Tell us what your professional background is. Sure. So um, I graduated with a degree in accounting and went to go work for a big accounting firm and was a financial statement auditor and was there for quite a while and really got um, to understand accounting very well and the finances of companies. And then I wanted to get more involved in running a company. So I went to go work for a huge international bank and got more into marketing and product management with them. Um, and was able to have a pretty successful career until I, I didn't, <laughs> until the economy weakened. I think it's like so many people, right? Um, in 2008, when the economy was weak and I was working for a bank, I ended up losing my job along with everyone else who worked for that bank in that year. So that was a little bit of an adjustment and a shift for me at that time. It's actually an interesting topic given just the climate that we're in right now, right? So how did that, how did that shift impact you mentally? You know, it happened at an interesting time in my life personally as well, because I had also just gotten divorced and I had a daughter who was about one. So I, I think I was more worried about my personal things than I was about my work at that time. And so in retrospect, I think it happened at a good timing for me because it led me to look in a different direction and led me to entrepreneurship. And I don't know had all those things not come together at the same time, if that would have happened and I would be where I am today. Um, but, but also it was, it, it, there was some emotional investment because when you put your heart into a company and you put a lot of time away from your family, um, it's a little bit of a kick in the knees, right. To realize that you could get laid off like that. Um, mm -hmm. so it was, it was, it was difficult emotionally, but I think because of personal stuff I had going on, it didn't feel like as big of a deal at that time. So I guess there's probably a lot of listeners that have had that impact given, just everything that's happened. Are there any, are there any bits of wisdom you would give to someone being on the other end of it for so many years now? Well, probably the wisdom I'd give isn't stuff people really want to hear at the time that they lose their job, but that really, you know, things happen in life for a reason or for a season. And for me, I feel like it led me down a path to consider things I never would have considered before. And I'm, I'm now in retrospect, very grateful of having lost my job because I think I, I never even really considered the fact that I could have work-life balance. I just thought that was something you don't have. <laughs> so right. I'd gotten so used to the corporate world. I just thought that was life that you kind of worked most of your time and you didn't have a lot of time with family and friends. And, and um, so I think you just never know where your journey is going to end or where your next step is even going to be. So sometimes when you're forced to look for something different, it might end up being something much better that you couldn't even have even dreamed of. Yeah. So let's, let's dive into that with the question of, do you remember when you achieved six figures? Because you were a very high six figure earner. So yeah, I do. I think it was my sixth or seventh year after graduating college. So I was, the funny thing is, you know, I think it's because I was a CPA and I'm numbers driven, like those numbers really stand out. And so I'll always remember that as a junior in college, I got recruited to go work for these big accounting firms. And I remember I had this signed letter that I was going to go work for this big firm. And it was 1997, so the, <laughs> it was a long time ago. But I remember my offer was for $34,000. I don't know why I remember that number so specifically, but I felt like it was so much money at the time because I was working for you know, whatever minimum wage was at a yogurt shop at that time, $6 an hour or something like that. So it felt like a huge number then, but I remember I dreamed and I, you know, if I stay at this, if I stick with this career, I can earn six figures. And I, I remember dreaming about the type of financial freedom that might bring. So, you know, I worked hard and I kept getting raises and I think it was about my sixth or seventh year out of college that I hit that six figure mark. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that felt like? Yeah. You know, I remember it felt very gratifying, but I also remember it felt like, huh, doesn't really feel that different. <laughs> and I think, you know, what I started to learn around that time is the more you earn, the more you spend. 
So it doesn't feel like you have more money. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it didn't feel what I felt like it would feel like. And I think that's around that time also, I decided to kind of make a, a, a mental shift in how I spend money because it's really easy to just make more and spend more and then you're still living paycheck to paycheck. And I think you hear about, you know, people, even celebrities who make millions of dollars who live that way and end up going bankrupt. So it was around that time that I really started, I read, I read a Dave Ramsey book, I remember called um, Total Money Makeover. And it kind of made me shift my focus on how I thought about money. And rather than spending what I made, it really made me think about the future and really wanting true financial freedom and not having debt, not you know going and getting the next bigger car and taking on a bigger car payment because you had more income. Mm -hmm. So it was a big mental shift for me around that time that I started to make six figures. So I know you do a lot of coaching on that, actually. It's one of your passions. Yeah. So maybe talk a little bit about that. We have a lot of listeners that are aspiring to six figures, and I think that they can get a lot of wisdom from the things that you teach. Um, we also have a lot of listeners that are already at six figures mm -hmm. that hopefully have learned that lesson, right? But maybe not. So mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, Total Money Makeover was kind of the start for me. And then I and I took some additional Dave Ramsey courses because it was so impactful for to me for me. And one of them was called Financial Peace University. And then I realized it was something I could teach to help other people learn to have financial peace. Because I think that word peace mm -hmm. is something that is seen so unattainable, whether it's peace financially or personally or you know, with God, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And it's a mind shift, right? It's it's a recognition that I don't have to spend every dollar I make. If I have income and I don't have debt, I can do so much more with that income. I can I can really offer it to people who need it, you know, offer charity, or I can really offer help to my kids in a different way, or I can really have comfort and confidence if there were another downturn in the economy or something happened financially or medically that there wouldn't be an additional stress added because of finances. And I think that's the the thing that I've seen most as I've coached other people and even you know helped people on the business side of things is we have so many stressors in our lives and oftentimes one of the biggest one is finances. Mm -hmm. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck, regardless of what your income is, it's very stressful on your life, which then impacts every other aspect of your life and every aspect of every relationship you have. So when you can get people out of that mindset of spending every dollar they make, but instead creating true financial freedom, it really provides an additional sense of peace that I don't even think, again, kind of like the work-life balance I didn't think was possible. I didn't know financial peace was possible mm -hmm. until you really started to put the steps in motion. And it's just freedom. It just gives you freedom to not have that stress, but also freedom to do things you might not otherwise do. You know, long vacations, um, put your kids in private school, um, you know, I have a son who is seven, who's in first grade, and he was diagnosed with a pretty severe uh, form of dyslexia about a year and a half ago. And I remember just thinking, okay, well, whatever it takes, you know, we have the financial ability to help him in any way we need to help him. If it's a specialty school, which is what ended up happening, we can do that. And, and taking the financial stress out of that emotional stress of learning about, you know, that he was going to have difficulty learning mm -hmm. really provided a, a good sense of peace. I know you also have basically now provided for him through his life too, which I think is something that as a mother, mm -hmm. just because I know you so well, provides a lot of peace for you long-term that yeah. he will always be taken care of. Yeah, for sure. You know, you it, knowing that if something happens to you, that your kids are going to be okay, at least financially. I mean, there, there's always going to be an emotional component, but it just removes one additional layer of, of stressors, which is, you know, Mm -hmm. it, it's really indescribable and it's really something that's hard to, to put a, a tangible, you know, benefit to. Yeah. So you talked about your career path. Let's, let's go a little bit more in depth into that. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more in detail about what you did and the, the depth of your career. Cause you were there for a while before you decided to take this entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. I think I, I worked in the corporate world for about 15 years before I've now been on the entrepreneurial side for the last 10 years. So now I'm aging myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in the corporate world, I had a, a progression. You know, I, I was one of those people who always gave 110%, who always wanted to be striving to improve. So when I was a financial statement auditor, I, I got up to the level of you know, senior management overseeing audits of financial statements. But then I went to go work for a bank 
And I was with that company for six or seven years, six and a half years. And that whole time, you know, I was getting promoted probably annually to take on additional responsibilities. So I, I, I oversaw a lot of teams. I managed a lot of people. I managed a lot of processes, mm-hmm. whether it was IT or marketing or, you know, set it, helping set sales goals and write compensation plans. Um, so I got to experience a lot of things that led me to understand how successful businesses worked. <laughs> um, and I think that's what led me to then be able to transition to have a successful entrepreneurial career. Mm-hmm. Um, because I really recognize that, you know, you can do all those things as, as a sole proprietor <laughs> and bring all the best practices together to be successful. Yeah. Any part of that that was your favorite? Hmm. All of it, because all of it led me to the experiences to help me be successful later in life. So it, it's hard to, it, of course, there's times you say, man, that was a hard boss, or man, that was a, a, a bad responsibilities that I didn't really enjoy. But at the end of the day, each one of those just helps you learn, mm-hmm. right? So you're either, you're either learning or you're stagnant. <laughs> and sometimes you learn a lot more from failures or from hard things than you do from the easy things or the things that you love. So it's really hard to say that there's a favorite because all of it led to the progression in my career and helping me be a more well-rounded individual. Mm-hmm. And you love your life now. I do. I do. I really, I can honestly say I'm at peace with my life and with the, the life my husband and I have built around our family. And we both get to work from home and have somewhat flexible schedule. And we both get to spend a lot of time with our kids. Um, and that's what life's about, right? Is your family. Mm-hmm. So one of the other questions, you know, I always ask podcast or book and which one would you most heavily recommend other than this one? Of Of course, course, of course, this podcast. (laughs) Um, So I've been like on this podcast journey lately with um, a couple of different things. I have a favorite podcast around fasting and understanding how to improve your health through giving your gut a break from eating all the time. Um, But I also have a lot of books who've been very impactful for me. This, so we're just we're in 2021 right now. In case you're listening to this later, so we just came out of the year of, we basically just hit the year mark since COVID-19 really came mm-hmm. to the United States. So it's been a year of, I think, personal learning for a lot of people. Um, and for me, I've had a couple of books this year that have been really impactful. One is called The Untethered Soul. Um, beautiful book really helps you think in a different way and kind of become the witness to the thoughts that sometimes take over our lives and drive us that really are not who we are. You know, I think we sometimes become so um, caught up in our thoughts and and sometimes they're not that nice. (laughs) Right? You know, we say stuff for ourselves. We would never let someone else say to us. Um, So that one was super impactful. And then kind of along that same journey, there was one called Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender. And it was more of the process of how do you realize you're not your thoughts? How do you realize you're the soul behind those? And how do you put that into practice every day? And both of those have been super meaningful to me just because, you know, I think we're all in search of happiness, right? That's, that's really what we all want. When we say, what do we want for your kids? You say you want them to be happy. Yeah. But what does that really mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm now a firm believer each and every one of us can have peace and fulfillment and happiness regardless of what's happening around us. And I've learned that during this hard year um, because it's all about how we react to it mm-hmm. and how we think about it because our thoughts lead to emotions. Right. So if we're feeling depressed and sad all the time, a lot of it is because we're creating the thoughts that lead to that. So those have become so two of my favorite books. in that. We could do a series of podcasts on that. Literally. Yes. <laughs> a lifetime yes. of podcasts on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what am I not asking? We, you know, the demographic of these listeners. So what am I not asking that you think in your knowledge base would be really impactful for someone to hear? Um, well, so I, I have a blended family. I have three stepkids. I have a daughter from a previous marriage. And then my son and I have, or my husband and I have a son who's seven. So there's five kids in our family, um, which creates a lot of busyness, right? Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things as moms, especially, that we tend to feel like is that we can't be successful in business and be a good mom. Mm -hmm. I think that is a program that I had built in my own brain, speaking of what we were just talking about, 
that I had learned to believe for a long time as I was growing up, you know, seeing other families. It seemed like moms were either stay-at-home moms and were present and doing everything they could for their kids or they were working. Mm -hmm. And I had this belief it was one or the other. And I think what I've learned is, gosh, there is true balance. And if you can truly balance, that's really good for your kids. It's good for them to see a mom who is productive and working if that's what she chooses to do. Not that that's what every family chooses to do or should do. Every family is different. But I think there is a lot of um, beauty in being able to show your your children that you can work and provide. And and for me, you know, I've worked since I could at 16. Like I've always just wanted that sense of financial independence and security that providing my own income brought. And I've now learned that you know, through trial and error, frankly, that you can have both and you can be successful at both, but you got to give yourself a whole heck of a lot of grace Yes. <laughs> and realize there's no such thing as perfection and we shouldn't be striving for perfection. Mm-hmm. We should just be doing our best. And if you're doing your personal best, there's nothing else that you can ask of yourself or that anyone else can ask of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're amazing. Mm-hmm. You're amazing. And Thank you for you. doing this. <laughs> And I, I, you and I talk a lot about this, about grace, because we all need it and we all need to give it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. And when we give it, it's easier to receive it for ourselves, mm-hmm. right? I, I, again, going back to our thoughts, I think it's easy to give someone else grace. It's harder to give yourself some grace. And as moms and working moms, mm-hmm. we need to do that on a daily basis, <laughs> frankly. So true. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Thanks for having me. It was fun. It's good to see you. You too. In person. I know. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com. 